is um, when the absolute value of a is greater than 1. So ladies and gentlemen, again, the main important thing when graphing absolute value equations is identifying the vertex first. As long as you can identify the vertex first, we can be able to graph it. So in this case, remember, vertex takes the form of hk. Well, I'm not adding or subtracting anything outside of my function. So my k value would be 0. But now it's x minus h. So the value of h is going to be 3. So my vertex is 3 comma 0, meaning my graph has been horizontally shifted 3 units to the right. Because remember, the standard form is at 0, 0. So now I go over 3 units, and I make my vertex. Does everybody follow me how I found my vertex? Yes? No? Maybe so? All right, good. Now, when we look at the absolute value of our parent graph, remember the vertex is at 0, 0. It goes over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2. It follows that pattern going up. Now, what is important is here I have a value of a, which is negative 4. What a tells me is now my graph is going to be reflected over the x-axis. So rather than opening up, when it's negative, it now opens down. The other thing I want you to understand is this has like a slope of 1 over 1. That tells you to go up one, uh, for your up 1, over 1. Up 1, over 1. Up 1, over 1. All right? Yes? Then you'd go up 4 over 1. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Just convert this. It's kind of like the slope between the points. So now I go down 4 over 1. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I go down 4 over 1 unit. Down 4 over the other unit, right? Because it makes a V. And you can see that since this, the absolute value of this number is greater than 1, not forget about the negative, but since it's large, you can see that that compressed it horizontally, right? Okay. Or vertically stretched it, whatever you want to think about it as.